let us adore Christ the Lord, who promised to send the Holy Spirit on his people. Alleluia, alleluia. Well, good morning and welcome again to Dale's for Daddy. My name is Father Joe Serrano. Today is May 28th, just a few days before Pentecost. So let's begin with a, a prayer to the Holy Spirit looking toward Pentecost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us bow down in humility at the power and grandeur of the Holy Spirit. Let us worship the Holy Trinity and give glory today to the Paraclete, our Advocate. O Holy Spirit, by your power, Christ was raised from the dead to save us all. By your grace, miracles are performed in Jesus' name. By your love, we are protected from evil. And so we ask with humility and a beggar's heart for your gift of charity within us. The great charity of all the hosts of saints is only made possible by your power, O Divine Spirit. Increase in us the virtue of charity that we may love as God loves, with the selflessness of the saints. Amen. A short reading from the Holy Gospel, according to John. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, I do not pray for my disciples alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their word, that all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I living in them, you living in me, that their unity may be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Several times in the scriptures, Jesus directly prays for us. But for me, this is the most powerful prayer. The words speak the most to me. Um, here at Dalesford Abbey, our first abbot uh, was a man named John Neitzel. And his motto, uh, initially in Latin, what unum sint, in English, that they may be one, came from this passage. Uh, so it has a personal connection. Um, but also I think it touches upon the heart of uh, not just what this abbey would hope to be, uh, but what the church is called to be at its best, all grounded in the love between the Father and the Son this call to communion. I'd like to share this morning two thoughts from St. Augustine uh, that talk about this Holy Spirit and how that gift affects us. You remember, it says in Scripture, God is love. And Augustine says, that's the beginning of the understanding of the doctrine of the Trinity. And Augustine was a teacher, so I'll play teacher for a moment. Uh, imagine a circle that says, love God, and then Jesus told us to call this God Abba. By definition, Augustine says, love is outgoing, so the love extends itself. The word that Paul uses is to self-empty. And it, this self-emptying begets the Son. Another circle, the Son, the Word spoken by the Father, a love that matches the love of the giver. If this all happens in eternity, so there's no time, there's no beginning and no end. And so that's why the creed says, begotten, not made. 
Jesus is at one with the Father, is indeed equal to the Father, is the mirror of the Father. And therefore, as the Father's love goes out, so the Son's love goes out back to the Father. So Augustine, the teacher, would say, do you see? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is the lines. The Holy Spirit is the bondedness in God. It's that dynamic love that makes them one. Modern theologians would say, the Holy Spirit is what makes God a we. And this Abbey, as indeed our church, is called to share in that we, because that's what Jesus prayed. Father, may they be one, as you and I, as we, Father and Son, are one. Twice over, in the Holy Spirit. Catechism calls that sanctifying grace, the very life of God shared with us. I once read a Protestant theologian who said, every time you use the word grace, try substituting Holy Spirit. I don't really know if it always works, but every time I've tried it, it works. A share in God's inner life, that communion that bondedness, that love that makes God a we and us a we. And Augustine has a second teaching that I think helps. Augustine says, we all know from Paul that Jesus Christ is the head of the body that is the church, a church that has many parts. They're different, but they're supposed to work together. Augustine says, how do they work together? They work together in the Holy Spirit. What do I mean? Augustine says, well, would it help to say it this way? The Holy Spirit is the soul of the body that is the church. Now you have to remember, Augustine is a student of Plato, and in a Platonic philosophy, the soul does three things. It gives life. So when the soul has left the body, there's a corpse. There's no more life. Our church is alive when the spirit is among us. Second thing Plato says is that the soul gives movement to the body. Uh, when the soul has left, the corpse can't move. You remember John the 23rd, Vatican II, who prayed that the Holy Spirit would come upon us that we might be filled with dynamism and we might move forward, might walk away from our fears of the world and engage the world, bring them the good news and, and listen to them as well because God's presence is in all of creation, not just with us. So that the soul gives life, gives movement, but most importantly and appropriate here, Augustine says, the soul is the source of coordination in the human body. What does that mean? Well, he's working with a rather primitive medicine. They don't know about the nervous system in the fourth, fifth century. Rather, when they ask the question, when I tell my arm to go up, why doesn't my leg go up? Plato says, well, the soul takes care of that. The soul is the source of coordination among the different parts of the body. Augustine says, how about the church, the body of Christ? The coordination between these different parts, different people with different gifts, is the same spirit that makes the many one. So like a soul in the human body, the spirit is the soul of the body of Christ and brings harmony among the different parts. So it's a twofold teaching. It's an appreciation of where that drive to be loved, to love and be loved, that is so much a part of being human. Where does that come from? It comes from being made in God's image, sharing in God's we. 
And when you live that, you appreciate that there are differences among the community, be it the Abbey, be it the local church, be it the larger church. There are different parts in this body with different gifts. And sometimes we bump, of course we bump. But it's the spirit that can bring harmony to the different parts. So we can rejoice in our different gifts rather than trying to make the other person like me or the other person trying to make me like him or her. Uh, that's not of God. That's domination. That's not service. The spirit calls us to listen to one another, to work together, to enable these different parts to be in communion at one as the Father and Son are at one. A God who is three at one. A church that is many but in communion. So, prayer of Jesus. Father, may they be one as we are one. I think speaks volumes to each of us. And as we approach Pentecost, we pray again for the Spirit. We let this happen in a real way in our lives again this day. So we have a closing prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Renew in our days the gifts of healing, among those who care for the victims of COVID-19, keep in your care all medical personnel who put their lives at risk for us. Bring inner healing to those afflicted, eternal peace and light to those who have died, and the consolation of your love to those who grieve the loss of a loved one. O oh God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May o God, Almighty God bless us and all the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I bid you God's peace.